Hi y'all and welcome back. This is Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series. And I am Professor Terry True Love. And in this episode, part of the Cardiac series, and specifically the ECG series, we are going to be looking at atrial ventricular end bundle blocks, that is ABB and BBB, including first, second, and third degree type blocks, and left and right bundle branch blocks. Sources for this episode include Iggy's MedSurge Nursing 9th Edition and Soul's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing 7th Edition. Atrial ventricular blocks occur when the junction is unable to conduct sinus impulses to the ventricles in a normal manner. This results either in a delay in conduction or it will completely block the conduction. And that blocking can happen intermittently or it can be a complete block where none of the impulses ever get from the atria to the ventricles. And some of the main causes for AV blocks include aging, but more likely ischemic changes from heart disease. And when reviewing your ECG strip, the AV blocks can be differentiated by the characteristics of the PRI, that is, the PR interval. In a first degree block, all impulses eventually reach the ventricles, but they are delayed. In second degree AV blocks, some sinus impulses reach the ventricles, while others do not. In third degree AV block, no sinus impulses ever reach the ventricles. And here we have an example of an AV block, a first degree AV block. Every impulse through the AV node is delayed. This is represented on your ECG as a prolonged PR interval. It is common in the elderly and patients with heart disease. In second degree AVB, what we notice is that not all the impulses from the atria get through to the ventricles. The impulses through the AV node are intermittently interrupted. There are two different types of second degree AV block, and the diagnosis depends on the specific characteristics of the PR interval and the following QRS complexes. A second degree type 1 AV block is also known as a Winkingbach phenomenon or a Mobitz 1 block. In a second degree type 1, the PR interval becomes progressively longer until a QRS complex completely disappears. Look for P to P intervals that remain the same, but you will notice that the R to R intervals continue to shorten until a QRS complex completely disappears. That AV node, by the way, recovers after the drop beat, and so the cycle is reset and begins to repeat. When you are documenting this, describe any patterns, including conduction ratios. That is, for every second or third P wave, you drop a QRS. Note that ratio. In this example of a Winkybach type 1, we see that for every three P waves, there are only two QRS complexes. A P wave occurs, it's followed by a QRS. A P wave occurs again, and the QRS happens a little bit longer delay. The PR interval is longer. And then the third P wave, no QRS complex occurs. We could say that this was a Mobitz type 1 with a 3 to 2 P to QRS ratio. Second degree type 1 AV blocks are considered a more serious than a first degree AV block because they involve more pathologies and they show a bit of a progression. Second degree type 2 AV blocks, also known as Mobitz 2s, are more dangerous than type 1 because they can lead to the very dangerous third degree AV block. In a second degree, Type 2 AV block, there is intermittent blocking of the impulse from the SA node to the ventricles. It is often seen in conjunction with bundle branch blocks. In this case, the PRI is always regular. It is always the same. However, the QRS complex drops suddenly and unexpectedly, and this results in a slower overall heart rate. And that slower heart rate may prove to be symptomatic. In this example, notice that the PR interval remains the same. What simply happens is a QRS complex simply drops off, doesn't exist. Notice, especially for the lower strip, how slow the ventricular response time is. 
This could lead to symptomatic bradycardia. The most serious type of AV block is a third degree heart block, also known as a complete heart block. In this type of AV block, no atrial impulses are conducted to the ventricles. Although it is known as an AV block and therefore implies that we're looking at the junction, interruption may occur in the bundle of hiss or the bundle branches as well. In third degree block, the atria and the ventricles are beating independently of each other and have no correlation with each other at all. This means that the P to P intervals are regular, as are the R to R intervals. However, you should notice there is no predictable relationship between the atrial waves and the ventricular waves. And because the ventricles are firing at an idioventricular rate, this may result in symptomatic bradycardia. And in this example of a third degree heart block, we see the characteristic dissociation between the atria and the ventricles. The top strip, you'll notice that the P waves are all marked out. You'll also notice that some of the P's actually seem to occur within the QRS complex. This reflects the fact that there is no relationship between the atria and the ventricles' electrical activities. If you look at the top strip, in fact, you'll notice that one of the P waves has distorted the line coming into the QRS complex. On both strips, notice the very slow ventricular response, meaning your patient could be suffering from symptomatic bradycardia. It is sometimes difficult to discern where the junction ends and the bundle hiss begins. Well, bundle branch blocks sometimes act very similarly to third degree heart blocks, or they can simply cause a delay in the impulses between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So a bundle branch block occurs because of an interruption or delay of the impulse from the atria to the ventricle. These can occur in the bundle of hiss or in the bundle branches themselves. If it happens in the bundle of hiss, it is going to look similar to an AV block. And its causes are similar to that which caused an AV block. However, bundle branch blocks have unique characteristics. And they have unique causes. For a right bundle branch block, causes include congenital uh, defects, myocardial infarction, myocarditis, pulmonary artery hypertension, and pulmonary embolus. Whereas a left bundle branch block are usually caused by myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, and hypertension. So the bundle branch block is a delay in either the left or right bundle, and this causes the left and right ventricles to depolarize at a slightly different time. This results in a widened QRS complex when viewed through an EKG strip. This may result in parts of both the left and right ventricle QRS complex being visible. And if you see them being visible, they'll, slightly, they'll be slightly offset. And this may be seen in the rabbit ears QRS complex. So in order to discern this rhythm, observe for a QRSI of greater than 0.12 of second. The overall ventricular rate may be slower than normal, but other parts of the ECG are unaffected by bundle branch block. And here I have included an illustration to remind you of not only the location of the bundles, but where specifically such a block might occur. And consider when you're looking at this diagram, if there was an interruption to the electrical flow through one of the bundles, how that would affect or slow down depolarization in the affected ventricle. And in this illustration, we see an example of some of the changes of the ECG that can occur with bundle branch block. On the top, we have normal looking QRS T complexes. In the middle, we see the characteristics of a right-sided bundle branch block, which shows the widened prolonged QRS. And on the bottom, we see the left bundle branch block with the double QRS complex, also known as rabbit ears. Because many of our antidysrhythmic medications given for bradycardia really affect the SA node, and in the cases of AV blocks and bundle branch blocks, there is a disconnect between the atria and the ventricles, 
those medications may not be the most effective first-line therapies. The most effective frontline therapies are pacemakers, therefore. We will learn more about pacemakers in the upcoming episode titled Better Medicine with Edison. But for now, that does conclude this episode. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you plan on coming back to listen a little more. And if you are, I'll see you then. Take care now.